I'm wishing everybody a Merry Christmas from God's Church of Love Online. This is Pat's Two Cents. And we know that today is not the day Jesus was born. We know it was sometime in the fall. But we celebrate him. That's the bottom line. He is the reason for the season. Not the presents, not the gifts, not the Christmas tree, not the decorations. But Jesus is the reason for the season. So we want to celebrate what Jesus was all about. And what does the Bible say about God? God is love. So we're going to start out with reading scripture. And we're going to paint a picture of his love and how we are to live in it. Hang on. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. And we're going to read the account. Now remember, we're celebrating Jesus. For those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, that's fine. Celebrate Jesus. That's appropriate every second of every day, every day of every week, every week of every month, and every month of every year. All right. Starting at verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth in Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great, the child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you great tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, not some people, all. Pat's two cents, I had to add that in. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Christ, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. For many of you, you, it sounds poetic. A babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. Oh, but a manger was a feeding trough hmm, for cattle. That's all it was. And they were in what you would today would call a barn where animals sleep. Why? There was no room for them in the inn. And unfortunately, today, there is still no room for him. <clears throat> and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Mm. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God 
for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. When you notice that God did not send his angels to the politicians, God didn't send his angels to the heads of state. He didn't send his angels to the celebrities that all the movies fancy. He sent the angels to the nobodies of society. Mm -hmm. They're not nobodies, but according to society, they are. Because God wants everybody to know that his love is accessible to all. As the angel said, peace and goodwill to all people. Not to white people, not to black people, not to the Jews, to all people. Whosoever will, let him come. And one of the things that we lose sight of with God and his love is that the fact that Jesus came the way he did. Look at the story. Let's paint the scenario. Number one, how many of you, especially uh, mainly women, <laughs> the only ones could be pregnant. How many of you would feel comfortable taking a three days journey in a, long, in a car with a baby full of belly? With a belly full of baby. Wow, help me, Lord. <laughs> How many of you would feel comfortable traveling for days, hours, I mean, long trips with a belly full of baby? That would not be comfortable. Now, imagine doing that, not in a town car, not in a luxury car, not in a limousine, not on a plane, but on the back of a camel. Boom, 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 boom. Imagine that. That's how difficult it was. That was not a fun time for Mary at all. Definitely wasn't a fun time for Joseph because Joseph had to walk and, and lead that ba uh, the camel and Mary on. He had to protect her. The whole thing was an arduous journey when you think about it. So they didn't have the luxury of travel like we do. Now, they get to the city, and guess what? There's no room for them in the inn. It's difficult. It's night. It's cold. They're tired. She's probably starting to feel the labor pains already. And there's nowhere for them no, to go. Nowhere for, no hospital for her to lie down in a cushy bed and get taken care of. So the only thing left is a barn where other animals are and imagine what else might be in there too. It wasn't a glorious night for them. It sounds so poetic the way we paint the picture and we have the music and the candles and the ambiance and everything goes nice and, and sweet. But that was a very ugly moment when you think about it. Some of you would be so angry, so indignant. Here you are bringing the king of kings into the world and God can't even provide you with a bed. That's the way some of you would think. Think about that one. That's the way some of you would think. Some of you get very indignant when you got to sleep in the car or you got to sleep behind in somebody's garage or, or you got to park in a parking lot and things ain't glorious for you or you got to sleep in a flea bag hotel. But you got a bed. Mary did not. We don't think about those things. That what God brought to us, packed in love, packaged in sacrifice and suffering, sounds pretty and poetic the way the writer writes it in the text. But the bottom line is, it was a very ugly situation. And many of you would have said, forget this. If you can't do better than this for me, I'm out of this picture. You can pick somebody else. I'm done. Imagine that. Some of us 
especially who are used to having things comfortable. So when you think about going through, Joseph and Mary went through. Now they had to be taxed right when she was full with child, ready to deliver. They got to go through all this crap. Because some big wig up, up there wants everybody's money and he wants to dip in their pockets. So they got to travel all these miles and go through all this inconvenience so they can pay taxes. That was not a pretty time. That is what I would refer to as a trial period. Here we are right on the, pre the precipice of a blessing, of a miracle, of glorious blessings and salvation and deliverance and all this stuff that Jesus was bringing into the world. All this that Emmanuel was ushering in, God with us. And they had to come through crap to get it done. Now, you know, some of y'all would have a fat attitude. You know you would. Get a flat tire. You got to sleep in the car until AAA gets to you. You're ticked off. Why? Because everything has come easy for you. You don't thank God for AAA that you don't have to be stuck there for days and weeks. No, you get angry because you had to wait over an hour. Mm. Think about how ungrateful many of us are when things go wrong, when things don't happen and all the ducks are lined up in a row. Think about that. And what do we do? We complain, we grumble, we gripe, we fuss, we have hissy fits. Some of us go as far as cussing the people out that are coming to help us because they either took too long or they didn't do it according to our speculations. Wow. How ungrateful many of us can be. And this right here reminds us to be thankful when we really read it and picture what's going on. We have to remember to be thankful. You know, <laughs> I remember for three months I had to sleep in the car. And when I slept in the car, I was so grateful that I had a car to sleep in, that I didn't have to sleep under a bridge in a cardboard box. I had a car with armor around me and windows and heat and air and whatever I needed was right in that car with me. That to me was a convenience. That to me was a luxurious way of sleeping on the street of being homeless. Three months. Got a job, saved up my checks, and moved back into the apartment I used to live in. Didn't know anybody a dime because I left paid in full. But the thing is, I was grateful. Do you know, I, I heard a woman tell me when she was in the hospital, she wasn't in a barn like Mary and Joseph. She wasn't riding on the back of a camel full of baby. She was in a hospital with heat and air and the comforts of home, food available, all the medical staff right there at her beck and call. And because she didn't like the way somebody looked or she didn't like the fact that someone took 10 minutes too long to get to her. She cussed the doctors out. She cussed the nurses out. She cussed the assistants and all the staff out and, and, and just reamed them up and down. I mean, you talk about blasphemy. Whew. I never saw such ungratefulness, the lack of gratitude. They are there to help you get better. And you make their lives miserable, their day miserable, because they're not 
jumping to every beck and call the way you want them to jump. They're not treating you like royalty because they got other people to take care of. you not the only one in there, but you're angry because you don't have their undivided attention. And Mary and Joseph, this is the thing. Mary and Joseph are ushering in the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of the Living God, Emmanuel, which means God with us. And they can't even land themselves a room with a bed. Think about that. No bathroom. Imagine what that was like. No bed. No blankets. Wow. Hmm. So for some of you who want to ignore the fact that Jesus was, mm -hmm. some of you who want to ignore the fact that that story ever happened, the one thing that those of us who understand what it's like to do without, those of us who understand what it's like to be treated like second-class citizens, those of us who know what it's like to be financially underprivileged. We know that that whole family can relate to hardship. That whole picture is a picture of hardship, y'all. Jesus came in the most inglorious, inglorious, not glorious, inglorious circumstances. And we get angry if we have to use an outhouse or we have to go in the bushes. Imagine what Mary and Joseph had to do during those days they were in that barn. Where was their bathroom? Think about that. No lights, no heat, no accommodations whatsoever. But if some of you who are a royalty or who are uh, uh, the heads of state or some of you who are celebrities or some of you who are financially well set, you would have a hissy fit for days. If they ushered you into a barn and said, this is all we have for the night. And you're not even big with child. You're not ready to deliver. You haven't been on the back of a camel for days. You would have a fit. Do you know who I am? Am I right or am I wrong? But Joseph and Mary came in the spirit of humility, even though they had the highest one they could possibly have in their arms. They did not demand royal treatment. I'm just saying that because a lot of us lose sight of how blessed we really are. Some of you would be Oh my goodness, you'd be ready to commit hotty cotty on the driver if they pulled up in an old beat up jalopy to pick you up and take you from here to there. Here you are dressed in your finest. How dare they not pull up the limousine? Where's my driver? <laughs> you demand the best. But the best got the worst. Look at that picture. The best got the worst. And when God sent his angels to announce the best coming, what happens? He told it to the least in society. See, that's something I love about God's love. Picture that. God's love, he can relate to the sufferings, to lack, to disadvantages. He can relate to hardship, trials, tribulations, inconveniences, frustration, discomfort. He can relate to all of the above. We don't want to, 
Oh, you better not come up to me with some mess like that. Don't you know who I am? Treat me like I'm some nobody. There is no nobody in God's book. Only you and I look at people like that, don't we? But in God's dictionary, there is no word that says nobody. Because in God's book, everybody is somebody. No matter how you may look down at this one, that one, or the other one, to God, they are just as important as you. He loves them just as much as he loves you. So there are no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. Maybe in yours, but not in God. Now, when you look at how God treated this whole scenario, you notice who he went to. So now we dealt with the lack of gratitude. We dealt with complaining, grumbling, griping, because things aren't happening your way. Now let's move on down and look at the picture a little further. All right. Now, you look at the fact that God sent the angels to the shepherds watching their flocks by night. It sounds so poetic, but them guys are out there in the middle of the cold night watching their flocks. That ain't no fun job, y'all. That's not a clean, pristine job where people are lining up to rub elbows with them because they're somebody. No, uh uh-uh. No, they're the ones that society would deem invisible. They don't even count in their scheme of things. But guess what? That's who God sent his angels to. Don't you like that? See, for those of you who feel like you don't matter, for those of you who feel like you don't count, for those of you who have been abused, mistreated, raped, molested, beaten, laughed at, tricked out, those of you who have been turned out in however way that goes, played, disrespected, treated with contempt, Guess what? And those of you who have been bullied, God honors you. God counts you worthy of his love. God understands what you're going through. God knows who you are. You're not a wallflower. You're not an oops. You're not a nobody. God is mindful of you. That's what I love about his love. When I was back in the day thinking of myself as a nobody because I was treated that way, God revealed his love to me and let me know I mattered to him. If nobody else cared about me, I mattered to him. And that was the day I became a somebody in my own eyes because God deemed me worthy of his love, revealing himself to me. Do you know what that means? You know what it must have done for the shepherds? How they they might have seen themselves as nothing much to look at, nothing much to even take account of. And here the God of the universe sends his angels and his heavenly host to them. Oh, for those of you who are hurting, who feel like, oh my goodness, there's just no way I'll ever mount up to anything. There's, I messed up my life. I, I, yeah, I've, I've done this wrong and that wrong. Whatever you've done wrong, whatever your list is of failures. God is mindful of you. He's mindful of your pain. He's mindful of what you're going through. Don't sit there and think that because people put you down and people have have written you off their list and, and washed their hands of you that God has. Cry out 
unto him. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Don't give up on yourself when God hasn't. Don't treat yourself like a nobody when there is a no there is no nobody in God's book. Seek God. Seek his love. Everything you need is in God. You are somebody. God will use you mightily. You people may not line up for your autograph, but baby, guess who got the gospel out first? The nobodies of society. The ones God sent his angels to in the back of the desert. While everybody else was doing their thing and thinking they were somebody and dressed up for different occasions, God sent his angels and his heavenly hosts to the nobodies of society in the back of the desert, taking care of their flock. And it's the nobodies that went around telling everybody about the arrival of the Messiah. Think about that. What may God want to do with you? What might God want to say through you? Don't think because you can't rub two letters together to write a word, or you can't read, or because you can't, you, you don't have a command over the English language. Don't think because you didn't come from a high pedigree. Because your mama was a dope addict, your daddy was a dope addict, you don't know your mama, you don't know your daddy, you, was ra you were raised in an orphanage, whatever the case may be. Don't think because you are treated like a nobody that God doesn't take account of you. Go to him. He's the one you go to because he's the one that will never forget you. Remember that. You may be abandoned by this one, that one, or the other one. My father may leave me. My mother may leave me. But the Lord will take me up. Because that's the kind of God he is. All right. For those of you who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. For those of you who don't celebrate Jesus. But the bottom line is celebrate love, goodwill, peace toward all men. Because we all count, baby. Some of you may look down on black. Some of you may look down on Native Americans. Some of you may look down on Mexicans. Some of you may think little of Asians. Whatever your little issues are, we are all all important in God's eyes. Remember that. So for those of you who have little expectancy of this one, that one, or the other one, God will do mighty works through the very people you look down on the most. Yeah, he knows how to level the playing field, y'all. That's what I love about God. No big eyes, no little you. In God's book. So think about that when you think about the Christmas season. Think about how God is mindful of the least of these. Mm -hmm. How he used the least mightily. Can you imagine seeing the angels blowing the horns, announcing the arrival of the Messiah? And you expect people on the news to announce it and the celebrities to let the world know. Uh-uh. That's not the way God works. God's going to go to the people sleeping under the bridge. They're going to come running out talking about, guess who's here? Those are the kind of people God will use. Because they already know they don't have anything to offer. And whatever they do is through the might of God. But those of you who think so highly of yourself, don't hold your breath waiting for God to use you. You already got your little glory. It's called pride. 
But God will use those that some of you have written off and you've given up on so that nobody can lose hope that they have a chance with God. Everybody's got a chance with God. And I hope every one of you take that chance. Take that leap. Some of you are scratching and digging out there looking for a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or whatever, friend, and you're trying to find love in all the wrong places. Uh Uh-uh, baby. The love you need is in God. That's foundational. There is no human love that can replace that. The love I experienced when God manifested himself in my living room was not a love that I ever felt here on this earth. It was galactic. It was out of space kind of love. It was totally different. But it was pure, gentle, yet majestic. It was powerful, yet sweet. Oh, we won't go into all that right now. But just know that you have the ability to access whatever God has. Whatever he is, you can access it. No matter how high you feel or how low you feel. If you humble yourself and ask, you can access God. You can access your Savior, Jesus Christ. Won't you access him today? Ask God to forgive you fill you with his Holy Spirit, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the master of your universe, and go in the power of the Holy Ghost and see what God can do in your life. He can heal all wounds and mend all scars. He can comfort those that mourn. Some of you mourn things that happened to you when you were a little child. God can remove all pain. He can remove all tears. He, you don't have to wait until we cross over. He can do it right here in the land of the living for you. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on today. Button up your safety belt. Be saved and see what God will do in your life. See what God will do in your heart. See what God will do in your psyche. He's the great physician. He's the lover of your soul. He's the lifter up of your head. Don't you want to know a God like that? I introduce you. You, Jesus, Jesus, you. God bless you during these holidays. I hope you get to encounter what so many of us celebrate. God bless you.